Today I'm going to be going over how to make a HUD in Game Builder Garage, as well as some collectibles like these coins here, and then also multiple hit points. Like if I touch this, my guy screams, and I'll eventually die from it. Right here we can see our code. Uh, it's Honestly, it's pretty basic for a HUD. It's just really these, and then everything's linked up to our normal player character here. I'm going to be showing you guys also how to integrate this and the power-up code I showed last time, so if you get hurt, you lose your power-up. And this is the only code we need to add to take away our power-ups upon a hit. As always, I have more tutorials here on the channel, a lot of sprite-based player tutorials. If you're curious on making walk cycles, jumps, attacks, or power-ups, I've got tutorials for all of those. So go check those out and make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Game Builder Garage tutorials. With that said, let's dive right into creating our HUD. To start off here, I'm just going to be using a basic player for our initial HUD. Go on and grab yourself a game screen. This will help us with side scrolling as well. Uh, just make it a good size and then link it to your player. Now on the settings on here for our HUD, I like to turn this up to about like 90. But you, you don't have to turn it up that high, and you can do your own adjusting. But I'm going to put it on 90 for now. If we go ahead and hit play here, we can see that the camera does indeed follow us back and forth. So that's good. And our field of view looks really good. We can, we can see a lot, and it's straight on with the character. The next step to creating our HUD, we're going to need to go down here to game screen slash camera, first person, and grab the head. This is going to basically allow us to link objects to our player model and not have them interact with the world at all, but have them be locked to us as we move back and forth, and we are going to lock the HUD to this. Initially setting up our HUD here is going to be the thing that is going to take the most time, just trying to get our layout. I would recommend starting with a box that's really tall like this. Uh, let's make it visible, that way we can kind of see what it looks like right now, but make sure solid's off. Uh, movable doesn't matter because it's going to move with the head no matter what. And for my connection points, I have it to Z- minus and Z+. Plus. This is going to lock it in the middle of the character. If we go ahead and link this to our head, we can see that we do indeed have this box that nicely scrolls with the screen. And now we're going to be linking the rest of our boxes up here. In the initial segment of this video, I had all these boxes up here, and that was to help separate between each of my HUD displays. If we go ahead and hit play, all these are visible right now. We can see that we have this whole array here that moves with the player. Now, the HUD does shake because boxes have physics and they have weight to them. Fortunately, there's no way to get rid of that weight even if they're on zero gravity. So, like I said, I wanted to have one for the heart texture, the heart text, a space, the coin texture, the coin text, this another space, and then our timer. Now let's go through this step by step. We're going to make a small box here for the middle. And you can have any any amount of boxes up here. You can have big spaces, little spaces. You can have two boxes sitting up here. You just I would recommend a central one and then two on the side if you're going to do a smaller amount. For now, it's going to stay visible, but eventually we are going to be turning this off. But we want to be able to see how they're being laid out. Make sure it's movable. And come down here and make sure your connection point is changed. I have mine set to Y minus and Y plus. That way it locks directly to the top of this box here. All right, and once those are linked here, you should be good. Let's just, for now, we'll just go in here and you can see that this box is centralized. Only one box is familiar fell over there. But this point is centralized and now we can branch off of this one. Any other boxes on this side of the screen will have a connection point of X minus and X plus. That way it links directly to the side of this. Let's go ahead and link that up to the top. And I'll just throw in my next one here and it'll have the exact same settings. Once again, we're gonna link this up and check it. This one has an X plus and an X plus. Now that's just cause I want my timer to be locked to this end of the box. I want my timer to be linked from here out. So you can make your endpoint have an X plus X plus. Boxes on this side of the screen will have an X plus X minus, so just the opposite of the other side. We'll have the same movable settings on this one. Whoops. Go ahead and link the bottom of that to the top. And let's continue this outward. All the rest of my boxes here have an X plus X minus connection point. So we can just go ahead and link those right up to the top. 
of the adjacent one. And all this is just going to take some messing around, see what you want out of your HUD, and you can have, a, like I said, as many boxes or as few boxes as you want here. If we go ahead and hit play, they're all visible right now, so we can see that just like before, we can scroll the screen and see our HUD. Let's go through now and let's turn these all invisible. So every single box here, invisible. Now if we hit play, we can see that we can't even tell that we've got boxes here at all. So now let's go ahead and start mapping stuff to our HUD. The first thing here, let's create a level time. This one I'm going to set so it counts upward instead of down. You can also count it down and then you can link it up to the multiple hit point thing so that if time runs out, it starts dealing damage to the player. Go ahead and grab a constant. We are going to set this constant to 0 0.01 is what I've been using. I think that's pretty close to actual seconds and stuff. You can set it to like 0 0.015 or 0 0.02, whatever, however much you want it to increase is what you're gonna set this to. Next up, we're gonna get out a counter. We are going to link our constant to our counter up so we can see now our counter is ticking upward. Lastly, we're gonna go in here, grab a special object and a number object. I'm gonna stretch this outward so it's about this size here. Link your counter up to this so we can see that this is now increasing. I have changed the settings on here, so we need it to be visible, movable, zero gravity so it doesn't shake a whole bunch. The connection point, I have it set to center, center. A lot of this is just gonna take some playing around and seeing what exactly you like. Z plus is our display side. And I have the whole number set to three digits, so we can get up to like 360, or 120, or whatever amount. That seems like a reasonable amount for your level. And the decimal digits too. If we go ahead here, we link the bottom to our top object, you should be able to see that we now have it displayed up here at the top. Next up, let's go ahead and set up a collectible here. So my collectibles are gonna be coins. We're gonna need to grab a fancy object and you can grab any fancy object you want but I'm going to grab a balloon just because I think that that's pretty close to what a coin would be go ahead and link your coin up to your balloon that way you have a texture link to it and the settings of the balloon let's go ahead and not let's make this not movable material we want this to be zero gravity that way it floats the last thing you're gonna to want to make sure is that it's destructible now I'm going to make it so it's only destructible by the person. That way nothing else in this level can destroy this coin but me. Another option you have in here is this other tab. You can make it so it does not play that sound. So there's a crush sound effect that plays normally when you break an object. You can turn that sound off by hitting don't play. I'm going to hit don't play because I want it to just make a coin collection sound effect. In the coin settings, make sure you change your texture face to Z center, that way it's facing the camera. If you don't do that, it'll either wrap around the entire balloon, or it'll be displayed on the wrong side, and you won't be able to see it from the camera. Now onto our coin counter at the top on our HUD. Now you don't have to do this, but I decided to go ahead and make a smaller coin icon for my HUD, just because I didn't want it to be this big. But this that point is completely optional, you don't have to do that, you could always make your HUD box smaller to accommodate for a smaller spread of this. I just wanted to be a little fancy with it, I guess. We're going to go ahead and do a state change and an object break. We want to make sure this object break is sent to only our balloon. So when we detect that a balloon breaks, that is a coin, so we want to increase our counter. Next up, we're going to need a counter for our counter, which makes sense. Go ahead and link this to up, because we are gaining. Lastly in here, we're gonna grab another number object, node on. Make sure this one is set to visible, movable. I have it set to Z minus, just depends which way you're gonna need this one to face depending on your boxes orientation. Remember that the one side of our boxes on our HUD are flipped around than the other side. So that's why this side is gonna be Z minus, our other side is Z plus. Zero gravity, and then I have it set to center and center again, that way it's in the same orientation within our HUD. Go ahead and link it up to your counter. That way when your counter goes up, this number increases. And then set it to whatever you want on your HUD. So I'm gonna set it into those two. And let's hit play and see what happens. As we can see, we got our little coin icon and then a box. 
if we go ahead and collect our coin, it increases by one. Now let's say we want to make a sound effect when we collect that coin. We're just gonna grab the play SFX node on. Go ahead and link play into when an object breaks and select the sound you want. Under system sounds, there's a coin collect and that's the sound we want to play. And now we can go over here and we can collect our coin and hear the sound effect. The most complex system we have within this HUD display is our hit point detection. Now, if you want your player to have multiple hit points, you're gonna need to set this up. So let's go ahead and go through how this works. The very first thing we're gonna to wanna to grab is a touch sensor. Now within the settings in here, we're gonna want on touch, center and center. Uh, it can be a box, a cylinder, a spear. It, it, it matters, this is basically your player's actual hit box. So whatever you want the size of your hitbox to be, this is what you're gonna to wanna to set it to for that size. In the check what section, we're gonna make sure it's set to whatever our enemy's fancy object is. So for this, I've been using a robot, but if you want, let's say you have a robot, a mermaid, and all these different sorts of enemies that have different special objects, you're gonna to wanna to change those at this point. Go ahead and link your touch sensor up to your player. Let's actually, let's turn this visible here so we can see what it looks like. Here we can see this is our player's hitbox. If anything gets within this hitbox, he will take damage. While we're here, let's go ahead and change some settings in our person. Let's make sure that he is destructible by only this destroy object. This is what is going to kill him in the end once he runs out of lives. And he can be destructive to whatever you want, anything, that doesn't matter as much. Once you have those settings changed, let's go in here and let's start setting up the rest of our life code. First off, let's grab a timer. This timer is gonna act as a buffer so that we don't take damage constantly. I'm gonna set this timer to output after 0.2 seconds. Now, if you have an enemy that isn't constantly doing damage, maybe he just randomly attacks, then you won't really have to worry about this buffer here. But for now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this. Next up, we're gonna need a counter. This counter is basically gonna be the number of lives that we start with. We're gonna to wanna to make our timer count down on this. Let's set our range to whatever we want the max amount of lives our player can have. So let's say we want him to only be able to have like 10, 10 or 11, we're gonna set this up to 10. That way he can never exceed this amount. Our starting value is gonna be our actual amount of hit points, two zero, so I want him to have three lives off the bat. Next up, we're gonna grab a constant. Set this constant to zero, because once he hits zero lives, we wanna kill him, basically. Next up, we need a comparison, an equals comparison. So when these two both hit zero, he dies. Go ahead here and let's copy this timer. This timer we can just set to one though. And then we're gonna grab a retry node on and link it up to that timer. So after after he dies, after one second, we will retry. That way you can play a little death sound effect if you want within that window. Our destroy object will be next. We are gonna link this directly to our comparison and then link this to our player. We want this destroy object to be in the center. Uh, we don't really want this visible. Uh, under destroy what, let's make it so it can destroy a person. Now if you are using a sprite and you have a box linked to your person, we can go ahead here and we can link it to destroy the box too. That way your sprite doesn't fall through the floor when it dies. This is optional, but I'm gonna go ahead here and add some sounds. If you wanna play a sound, you're gonna link it directly up to this comparison. I'm gonna link this one up to jingles and tragic for when we have to restart the level. I'm gonna copy and paste that up here and let's go ahead and grab the output out of our actual touch sensor. You can grab it out of either spot, out of your buffer or your touch sensor. I want the feedback to be a little more instant than the counter though. And I'm gonna send this to damaged mail. For simplicity, since this coin counter is on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste that. Bring it over here. We're gonna link this directly up to our counter. I'm gonna make this tiny. And everything in here should be exactly the same. You might have to flip this Z minus direction. I'm gonna put the digits to two since I set it to a max of 10 lines. 
go ahead here and link the bottom of it to whatever box you want it to display on. Lastly, I'm going to take this heart sprite I made and link it up to this first box. Now we can see that we have our coins, our level time, as well as our lives all displayed here at the same time. Now let's say you want to take away a power up once damage is taken. I'll show you how you can modify this code to do that. I still do not have a HUD in this world just because typically Mario games would just have a coin HUD and you guys already know how to add that in now. And I don't need a lives HUD while playing this game because I'm just going to restart from the beginning if I take damage. So just for example here, Mario touches it, he dies immediately. If I grab the mushroom first, achieve the power up, and take damage, I stay alive. And then I die, if I get hit again. This power up code is exactly the same as the one I showed off in the last tutorial, except for you have two links here. Basically, you will just take this counter up right out of your object break. So when you break that apple, that is the power up, you increase this by one, giving you an extra life. This last thing that you will be adding here is when you get touched, if the touch sensor gets touched by the enemy, it brings down this counter which takes away your power up. The only other thing that differs within this window here is this counter. Since Mario only has one life, one hit point when he's small, we want to make sure he starts the game off with one life. And that is all you have to do to set up coins, a HUD, hit point detection, and power up removal in Game Builder Garage. I hope this tutorial was very handy. I tried to cover a lot of different topics all in one tutorial. I hope you guys like that. You can download both of these levels and mess around with them yourselves if you would like. The codes are right here. Go ahead, draw some inspiration from them, keep building great creations, and if you have any games that you've made in Game Builder Garage that you want us to play, go ahead and leave those in the comments below and we'll definitely check them out for a video. Thank you guys for watching.